Yes, right yeah. here. Valerie Clark, Career Specialist at Fort Myers Technical College. Katie Hume, Johnson Engineering. Uh, Art Cass, Lawn and Architect. And Julia Harper, uh, Heidi, in the back. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you for that. And with that, has everyone had a chance to review with the October events via email prior to the meeting today? Um, if anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, now would be the time to bring them up. I'm not seeing or hearing any, and we can get a motion for approval. I'm a motion for accept. Any motion by Darren? Um, second hand? Do I get a second? Yes. Mr. English, thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's a move. No comments on the approval minutes. Well done, Julia. A board member update. We were informed this. Morgan had a conflict today and will not be able to make it, so we're going to be able to read right through that segment. And then along with public comment, and I'm not clearly seeing any members of the public here, uh, other than obviously our gracious hosts, but uh, below, I believe we can uh, kind of forego that segment as well if we don't have any unannounced public attendance. And then the really the only other item we have for the tour of the school to see what you buy, what we have, and then you know, maybe we'll come back here at the end for a little bit of QA. It was a relatively short speech, and I mean, we wanted to go through the, the motions, and, uh, and at the time we probably thought Ms. Morgan would be here, so we'd like to give her a little bit of a platform as well. But other than that, um, we can really just kind of dive right into the tour, but unless you have something you would specifically like to introduce us to. No, I, if, 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 if we want to move right to the tour, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we'll go back to the one to the tour. So, the programs we did really look at that we still have are essentially culinary arts, which isn't really scheduled to be remodeled in any significant way, and then also the uh, cosmetology aspect. Correct. The Cosmo needs a refresh, but not necessarily a renovation. Okay, not a reload. But it is also a public face, so there's some yes. there's kind of security aspect to it as well. Yeah, also, I with cosmetology, if I want to bring it more uh, robust industry type of standard, so when a, when, a, when a person from the community comes in and our, our students are working on that person or helping that person, they feel like they're in a high class, upper level salon, and they may not necessarily get exposed to, to be honest with you. Um, and, and, and then when they walk out of there, they feel like, you know, and our students feel a little proud of working in there. Uh, so that's the refresh idea where we're going to redo the floor, polish the concrete. I've got new stations coming in for them. Um, and we're going to, you know, put some back lighting in the ceiling, kind of make it look like a real studio small, not just a shop or a lab. Uh, is there any other programs that jump up in mind that we haven't talked about a little bit? Uh, well, we quickly went past the electricity uh, program, and that one, along with major appliance and plumbing, is going to be moving to uh, L building. We also have um, uh, things like electronic technology, mechatronic technology, biomedical equipment repair. Um, in uh, this building, we have our nursing sim lab, and we mentioned to you guys that we also have F building was all nursing. But again, those aren't major parts of the um, phased renovation. Sim lab. 
we would have gone on there, but it's kind of gutted right now because Christmas. I just invested, well, they raised through their agency certification, the nursing program, uh, $80,000 to do uh, monitoring on the, on the simulations that they do in there. They're putting in new monitoring equipment, new recording equipment. Students will be, be able to now go home and all that base to now be able to go home after, after school, get in, onto the website and kind of analyze what they did during that simulation rather than having to be at school to do it. But yes, that, that's the majority, I think, now that we, we've covered. Were, were we, weren't y'all talking about building a whole new building on the other side of 75? Is that going to be part of this? No, it's a whole different concept. They're talking about a vocational high school, like a, a true vocational high school. But uh, there's obviously with the, the adult for the fire and police in New Mexico County down on Michigan. I think he was kind of weaseling away into that trying to plan to create a mega trying trying a mega high school vocational, but with the public service academies on a large, large acreage, so he has the skip bags and so all everybody could come from everywhere to do all the training. Because they don't have a shooting like range or driving range. range. Now whether that would be the building, at least at the high school level, would be strictly shops and they would utilize something in that zone over there for their core curriculum, like Eastley County, you still would go to Eastley County get the normal high school credit, and this would be a true you know, 20th century high-end vocational building of some type or whatever program. But there's, that's still conceptual. Uh, I don't know that it's funded in the next five or 10 year plan necessarily for that. Um, but it's something they're looking at. As your program, as these kids are through this program, do you rely on them for maintenance on the and Absolutely, the you do. <laughs> that's job, that's all the job training right there. Okay, just ask. Yeah, our accrediting body calls it work-based experience. <laughs> when they, we need a new hot water tank in cosmetology, they, they're the ones who put it in. And if I'm not mistaken, that new future potential book was never meant to be in competition specifically with your campus, correct? Uh, I, I'm not, I don't think so, no, but I don't know why. I don't, I think, I don't want to say for certain, but I think the intent was that this would only remain. Sure. It was not to be in competition with this no, other facility. Uh, so it may be different programs and things of that that they have over there that maybe aren't here. No, it, 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 you're going to run parallel. The reason being is, from my standpoint, you're living out there. I got kids out there whose parents will not put them on a bus and send them over here. It just isn't going to happen. So over 30% of our students come from the east zone and points east. I can appreciate that, but just make a comment. No, I know. I know. Try to understand it from my point of view. Probably 80% of the kids that I know out there, kids, children, and their parents, are, are here under questionable circumstances. Right. The children have to be educated. They're not IP kids. They're vocational type kids. So you're moving with your electricians, but they just need to step up. And their parents are not going to let them out of their sight. They don't want any problems. So I've, I've got to deal with that. At the same time, I can't have all my talent sitting there. Right. It's, it, it causes problems. It's crime and everything else. So the idea of it is to put a low tech setup out there. You see, we at least get them paint cars. I mean, I'm using that as rough terms, but the money's there. It's just a matter of putting it together. What you got here is great, but no offense, you need a lot of foundation and in, in, in infrastructure work here to make this even a compliant safety. I mean, uh, you're doing a great job. Some of them labs back here, <laughs> not my socks on. <laughs> but I'm scared to death to walk in this building. Y'all have buses that they go to? No. Everybody drives themselves. Yes. They run around. Yeah, even our dual enrollment students get themselves here, or their parents. And please, please come back, yeah. especially during so the day much, when students are here. So much more to see. You know, child, mm -hmm. respecting your time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we, we could, like Ms. Clark said, we could spend two hours, two and a half hours walking you through all these programs. But, I mean, you saw half of them. Really. The only private tours with like kids or Yes. Yes. So prior to uh, COVID, um, our admission specialist booked high school bus visits. So we would bring in 30, 40 students at a time from a specific school, a high school, and tour them through and let them eat in our cafeteria and let them ask questions and see our students live. That is the best way to garner their interest and to show them that there is something for everybody and that the traditional college route is not for everybody. And we do some middle schools as well, especially some of the middle schools that have been adding in some of the CTE components. We try to bring them in as well. Now, we're, we're hoping when we can get to post-COVID times and groups of that nature are a lot more feasible to be able to pick up with that again. We're all looking forward to that time. Yes, please. <laughs> our strategy for next semester is to try to zoom into some of these classrooms, like our my admission specialists. We'll try to zoom into a high school, maybe 12th grade or whatever, classroom to try to let, ask the teacher for you know 10 or 15 minutes of their time to keep it on a presentation and the kids can see it's a 15th year. Yeah, because the decision making for students could start earlier. Yes. And then do they have to make a decision like a junior per semester? Mm -hmm. Especially yeah, then where they and if they see that there's an opportunity, they're old enough to realize you know where they want to go. Mm -hmm. A lot then, of them a lot of them is they graduate and a year later they're here. Not that, not why not for graduation, right. they should be. They sit around for here and what, what the heck am I going to do with my life? Well, they're trying to figure it out. And they're here. So they're still kids, really, they're 19, 20 years old, but they're really a kid. Because yeah. they haven't hit the real world. So they figure out there's really no options that's not that way to miserable job that they don't want Is to do. Is there an age limit? No. no. How, many over, over, about 20 how many over 25 and 30 years? I think our median age, two or three years ago, our median age was something in the late 20s, early 30s, 28, 29 years old. Um, our most recent graduation, because we didn't have a full normal graduation this past year because of COVID, uh, we had a 62-year-old walk the stage and a 17-year-old dual in the world high school. So we run the gamut. Right. So when they fire me from the district, I can apply? Yes, sir. <laughs> If you're a veteran, I think you get four years to pay for it. You didn't take more programs. You're a Do you guys want to put the in the bus the parking and run shuttle on the HP over here? Say that again, I'm sorry. Get, talk to the bus guys about running the shuttle over here. The shuttle? Yeah. From? Uh, like out in Buckingham North River or something like that. Like out by Buckingham High School. I mean, we could, but, but again, most of ours are all adult. Mm -hmm. I mean, there would be, have to be like a dual, are you talking about for a dual moment student? Or, or yeah. No, I'm talking about kids that are graduating high school right now, or coming up. Where are you going to go? And you're saying without transportation? Right. The biggest issue is that their parents will not let them out of their son. Mm -hmm. I've got a 16 year old, I will not let out of my son. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's right here. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is they're, they're of the same opinion. But you just don't know this is quite a much trash. Those buses are run Palm Beach on the system. Right. But I was just saying, if they were to get on a public bus, you know, you know, bus, county bus from schools, I'm sure your parents would sit right in front of the car waiting for them to go. Right. That's a great idea. Full yeah. kind of black day week program. I'm trying to get kids over there. Right. Because until they build something out there, I gotta I, I just feel so bad because there's so much talent out there that's being wasted. And we have students commuting together from Clewiston and LaBelle. No, I got it. I right. So, it, like, and we agree with we agree with you. I don't I don't want to I don't want you to think that I'm not. I, I, I agree with you, and I think any ideas are you know ideas to put on the table because that's what we're about is helping sure, the community. Offer that out there, Buckingham. You vote that bus. But it's not about the money. They are over over. They have high demand. I got it. They yeah. have high demand. They don't have the classroom space. And that's why the renovation is so important. But as of right now, you have a backlog, so Correct. we have a bigger backlog. We've had students for the welding program who have been uh, waitlisted and then come back the next semester to get in because they, they want it that bad. 
and they'll, they'll wait that semester for it. So, we, in, just for retention purposes alone, too, if, if you're a student here that has completed a program, you get first option to go into the next program if you want to take it. Uh, and a lot of them will just take a program because they really want to be in marine mechanics, but they want to make sure they get in marine mechanics, so they'll go in something really related to it. Uh, carpentry is one, carpentry to plumbing, or carpentry to uh, electricity. electricity, that's one. And both of those trades really are useful when you get out here. Any other comments? Go around the room real quickly for the good thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. So how 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 long do your diesel programs are? <laughs> We're hoping as soon as the remodel two years. Done. Two years? <laughs> no, that depends on the speed of the remodel. Um, I don't want to bring something in. You know, not do it right. That's for sure. But um, uh, the diesel remodel is a phased project. Yeah. People have to move here, so yep. they need to work on that. Right. Next group moves over. So. And diesel's in phase three. The worst thing I can do is just bring students in, not actually prepare them. You know, yeah. so you've got to be ready to That's not fair. When well, you brought your, your semester, what, nine weeks? Two nine weeks semesters? Or are you wearing two six, two six months? Semester? So we follow the school district's calendar for semesters, but because we're clock hour, our students complete their hours and they're done. They don't have to stay for that entire semester when they complete. Does that make sense? I meant timing as far as actual students on property. Um, Is that year round? July through June. There's a little bit of a gap, maybe a two or three week gap. Where we your teachers and your staff run under the Lee County School District. So they would have to be paid year round as well. And that would be a part of the so we envision that you, this will be a year-long project. Um, there's a roofing project that they're going to meld in with it. They put that in the RFQ that's a separate funding line. So we envision this whole process to minimize the interference with his active program throughout the school year will take about a year. We'll know more once we start with an architect and we start nailing down the design and scope of work. Uh, we do a, a, what we call a phase process. Phase one is we fund the designer the full amount of their design contract. A small amount goes to a construction manager and a building official. We have them come on board for BD and code compliance. So that at the end of that phase, we have 100% biddable documents that have been plan reviewed, ready to go. Then we go out of the world, phase two begins, and that's where the GMP is created. And then we go back to the board for a total project cost approval with an actual bid GMP, open, qualified, Obviously, the lowest bid in most cases. So we'll know where that we are, and if we got to go back and whittle things back a little bit, that's the moment in time before we go to the board to build the project. But we envision about a, a year-long process. Right. What will we start in August? Pardon? What will we start in August? Yep. Okay. So um, I think we've got everything covered. We kind of went halfway around the room and. Um, Anything else from, from the other side? Before? You're welcome. Uh, we're about on our, our time limit, so can I get that motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion by Bob, second by Dana. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for the information I didn't know.